I will show you guys how to verify if a function is a solution to a differential equation and we'll do five examples and each example actually has two choices that will make this a lot more fun and uh, the idea is that we just have to understand the structure of the differential equation even though we don't know how to solve this from scratch yet but you see right here we have y prime and then we are given y already so we can just differentiate this right here and then plug in y prime and also y and verify if it works or not that's the idea so it's just a lot of differentiation work and keep in mind we could have just one of them being the solution or maybe both of them or maybe neither of them so keep all that in mind anyway let's get started with this one we need y prime so y prime is just going to be 2 over 3 e to the x and then differentiating this we get e to the negative 2x but multiplied by the derivative right here so that will make this negative 2 and then just plug in so we get that for the y prime which is 2 over 3 e to the x and then minus 2 e to the negative 2x and then we add 2 times y which is that one 2 over 3 e to the x plus e to the negative 2x and we're going to just kind of combine our terms and see if we end up with 2 e to the x all right distribute and do all that stuff we get 2 over 3 e to the x minus 2 e to the negative 2x and then this times that is plus 4 over 3 e to the x and then plus 2 e to the negative 2x and notice this and that cancel out and then this is 2 over 3 plus 4 over 3 which is 6 over 3 and that's indeed a 2 and then we have the e to the x which is exactly that so that means it checks this right here is a solution to that differential equation and now let's see if the second one also works or not all right differentiating this y prime will give us 2 over 3 e to the x and then do the derivative right here we keep e to the negative 2x but we multiply by negative 2 because of the chain rule negative 2 times negative 3 we get positive 6 all right and then plugging so we get that for this which is 2 over 3 e to the x plus 6 e to the negative 2x and then we add 2 times y which is that we have 2 over 3 e to the x minus 3 e to the negative 2x and then let's just go ahead and do that work 2 over 3 e to the x and then plus 6 e to the negative 2x multiply we get plus 4 over 3 e to the x and then minus 6 e to the negative 2x oh my goodness have a look this and that cancel each other out very very nice huh and then again 2 over 3 <laughs> plus 4 over 3 which is 6 over 3 and that will give us 2 and then we have e to the x and you see in fact both of them are solutions to this differential equation okay for this one notice that the y's are not isolated but it's okay because we can use implicit differentiation so we can get to the first derivative so let's get to work let me just put on ddx like this to signify that we are differentiating this with respect to x when we do so we have the derivative of x squared being just 2x but when we differentiate y to the second power we get 2y and since y is a function of x we are going to multiply by dy dx because of the chain rule and then the derivative of 9 is just going to be 0 and notice that we have this dy dx right here and we can just move things around so let's move the 2x to the other side this right here will give us 2y dy dx equals negative 2x and then from here we can just divide both sides by 2y and we can see that this and that cancel and this and that reduce and we get yeah dy dx which is precisely negative x over y and that's exactly what we have so of course this is a differential this is a solution to that differential equation cool huh for that one well let's see the dx right here we get 3x squared and then same thing for like earlier we get 3y squared dy dx and the derivative of 1 is 0 and now move things around again right here we are going to get 3y squared dy dx and that's equal to negative 3x squared and then do the same thing right divide both sides by 3y squared divide both sides by 3y squared this and that cancel this and that cancel but we cannot cancel the powers so in this case here we actually have dy dx being equal to negative x squared over y squared and of course this is not the same as that so this right here is a no-go so we only have one of them being a solution to that differential equation 
Okay, for this one, again, we just need the first derivative, so let's get to work. Right here, let me just write down y prime for the first derivative, and to do that, we differentiate this, which is e to the negative 3x, by using the chain rule, multiplied by negative 3. With the 2, we get negative 6. And then this right here, just bring the power to the front and minus 1, so we get plus 2 over 3x, and then this right here gives us negative 2 over 9, and that will be 0 for the last one. And now, you see that this right here is the y prime. So perhaps, let me just work out the right hand side. Here, if we get x squared minus 3 times y, which is all that, I'm going to put this right here, 2e to the negative 3x, plus 1 third x squared minus 2 over 9x, plus 2 over 27. And uh, just multiply this out and see what happens. Here we get x squared, and then multiply, we get negative 6 e to the negative 3x and then we get minus x squared and then this is going to be plus 2 over 3 you reduce so I don't forget about that and lastly we are going to minus again you reduce so we get 2 over 9 guess what people this and that cancel and uh, this right here is negative 6 e to the negative 3x and then plus 2 over 3 x and then minus 2 over 9 and that's exactly what we have for the derivative uh -huh. so this right here is a solution to that differential equation now let's try that one and notice for this one right here it's just that we don't have the first part does it matter well we will verify it we'll check it okay y prime is going to be 2 over 3 x minus 2 over 9 okay that was simple plug back in Again, let me just work out the right-hand side here. So we get x squared minus 3 times y, which is just that. 1 third x squared minus 2 over 9 x plus 2 over 27. Okay, so this is x squared, and then multiply this in. We get negative x squared, and then plus... Again, reduce that, so we get 2 over 3 x, and then lastly, minus 2 over 9. Aha! This and that cancel, ladies and gentlemen. This right here also happens to be 2 over 3x minus 2 over 9, which is a solution, right? Because it verifies with that. So this one also works. Okay, for this one, notice that right here we have the second derivative. So be sure we differentiate this twice. Yeah, okay, let's just get started with that. And uh, yeah, we have to use the product rule. First function, second function, right? So here we go. Y prime is going to be the first function. We keep that. And then we are going to multiply by the derivative of the second, which is going to be negative sin x. And then we are going to add the second function, which is cosine x. And then we are going to multiply by the derivative of the first, which is just going to be negative one half. So this is actually just minus one half cosine x. And that's actually positive. So perhaps let's just write it down again. This becomes positive one half x times sine x and then minus one half cosine x all right now for the second derivative product rule here so y double prime and that's the same as this notation okay first function one half x and then differentiate the second which will get cosine and then we add the second function which is sine x and then we multiply by the derivative of the first which is going to be one half and then the derivative of this is just going to be positive right because the derivative of this is negative so negative negative becomes a positive and then we have one half sine x and notice this and that together is just two over two sine x which is just sine x okay that's not bad have a look i'm just going to put down the second derivative right here and uh, we will get one half x cosine x and then plus sine x and we will have to add the y, which is given to be that. And that's going to be negative one-half x cosine x. Guess what? This and that cancel each other out very nicely. And indeed, we end up with just sine x. Whoa, pretty crazy, huh? This right here is a solution to that differential equation. Now, let's check the other one. Again, same thing product in action. So y prime, first function times the derivative of the second plus the second function times the derivative of the first, which is just one. All right, do this again, y double prime. 
product rule again. <laughs> differentiate, no, keep the x and then differentiate cosine x, we get negative sine x, so put on negative sine x like so. Keep the second, which is cosine x, differentiate the first, which is just one, doesn't matter. And then we add the derivative for this, which is cosine x. Mm -hmm. We can combine this and that together. And now let's put that right there. So we get negative x sine x plus 2 cosine x. So far, so good. And then we will have to add a y, which is that. And that is going to be plus x times sine x. Yes, this and that cancel, but this right here is just 2 cosine x, which is not the same as. Right, it's obviously not the same as sine x. So therefore, this right here is not a solution to that differential equation. For this one, once again, we have the second derivative, so let's just go ahead and get to work. Here is the y, so y prime is going to be 28x to the third power. That was so easy, huh? And then, do it again, y double prime. Okay, 28 times 3 is 84. Yeah, that should be right. Yes, and then x to the second power. Alright, cool. Alright, so that's also pretty easy. And the reason that you know the first part is easy because the second part is going to be... But, alright, let's go ahead and just plug in and see what happens. So here we have x squared, and then we are going to multiply by y prime, which is y double prime, which is that. 84 x squared, and then we add x times y prime, which is 28 x to the third power and then in the end here we add the y which is the 7 x to the fourth power do we end up with zero i don't know yes let's just work this out okay this is 84 x to the fourth power plus this is 28 x to the fourth power and then lastly we have plus 7 x to the fourth power altogether right here should be 119 x to the fourth power and this right here is for sure not equal to zero for all x so this right here it's not a solution to that differential equation here we go. Alright, y prime. The derivative of sine is cosine, and then the input stays the same. But don't forget to use the chain rule, so multiply by the derivative inside, which is 1 over x. So let me just put on the over x like this. Now, for the second derivative, we will have to use the quotient rule. It's alright, just do it. y double prime right here. This is going to be the following. We are going to square the bottom first before we forget. So let me just put that down right here real quick. And then we are going to keep the bottom function right here. And then multiply by the derivative of the top. The derivative of cosine is going to be negative sine. And then the input stays the same. But don't forget to multiply by the derivative of inside, which is the over x. And then we are going to minus because of the quotient rule. And then we are going to have the top function, which is just cosine of ln x times the derivative of the bottom, which is just multiplied by 1, which doesn't matter. So now, notice that this and that can cancel, so it's not so bad. And uh, this right here was a negative sign, so just keep all that in mind. And now, that's the second derivative. We just have to plug in into that. We are going to get x squared times y double prime, which is just all that. Negative sign of ln x, and then minus cosine of ln x, and then all divided by x squared. And then we continue. We are going to add x times y prime, which is going to be that cosine ln x over x. And uh, lastly, we have to add a y, which is just that sine of ln x. So let's see if everybody will add up to be zero. Notice that the x squared, x squared cancel. Likewise, this x and that x cancel, which is very nice. And perhaps let me just rewrite this again. This is negative sine of ln x just now. And then this right here is negative cosine ln x. This right here is plus cosine of ln x. And this right here is plus sine of ln x. Ladies and gentlemen, check this out. This is negative sine L and X can be canceled it with that positive sine L and X. This and that, oh my goodness, can also be canceled it to be zero. So all in all, this right here is indeed equal to zero. Therefore, it checks. Wow. Seriously, 
you have this differential equation. I don't see any place that can possibly end up with sine, cosine, or whatever, let alone the ln function. But the solution, uh, a solution for this is actually sine of ln x. That's pretty crazy. To learn about how to solve this, either you can watch my video right now or you can wait for your differential equation class, so up to you. But anyway, this is how you verify if a solution is, um, if, if a solution satisfies a differential equation or not, right? If you guys need more help, you know what to do. I have other videos for you guys, so check them out. And as always, that's it.